Hey, shalom, shalom, family, most high Christ, bless, happy Sabbath. Happy to be here with everybody. Make sure y'all got y'all pens, y'all notebooks for this one. I recommend it. I definitely recommend it. All right. Um, we're going to talk about today the exorcism. We're going to talk about what an exorcism Hmm, how do I want to say? The difference between evil and demonic forces. I'm going to kind of go in there a little bit. The exorcism. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 8. <clears throat> book of Acts, chapter 8. And we're going to start at verse 6. The book of Acts, chapter 8, and verse 6. Yeah. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Mm. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. So many, so it says, unclean spirits came out of people crying with loud voices. When I, when I originally, initially read this scripture, right, I'm, I'm in the book of Acts right now studying. You know it takes me forever to get through any book. I think I'm in chapter like 13 right now. And I probably was reading this like, what, three weeks ago. So it take me a while to get through stuff. But it say that, read that again, verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. So it say that people were possessed right here. A lot of times we see these things on TV, right? We see scary movies, exorcists, the conjuring, deliver us from evil. All these different things in these movies, and we say to ourselves, I know I was saying to myself, self, that's fake. That ain't real. That can't be real. Ain't nobody head spinning around, all of that type of stuff. <sighs> but this scripture right here says that unclean spirits came out crying with loud voices. Quick, quick side note. Uh, Back before the truth, I went on a trip, right? I went on a trip to, to Las Vegas. I was in Vegas, kicking it. And I say, hey, man, we went to like a, uh, what's it called? Uh, no, 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 no. I didn't do that. That's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't do that. I went to a, a hypnotist show. Yeah. So I say, man, hip getting hypnotized, that ain't real. So he, you know, he calling for volunteers and stuff. I'm like, me. I went up on stage. And it was like about 30, 40 people. And only like six of us got hypnotized. I was one of those ones. Out of those like 30 some people, bro. So I'm saying, why are you laughing, man? This is real. This is really happened. I got the video. <laughs> oh, I told you a story. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Um, so I ain't going to tell you all the stuff that happened. But that really happened, though. You can really be hypnotized. We go into, we go into the, to life with a certain amount of skepticism, a certain type of, a certain amount of doubt, and we got to be able to say, well, are these things in alignment with the scriptures? You know what I'm saying? Let's go to Deuteronomy, I believe it is. Hold on, let me get it. I think it's 23, 23 might be numbers. No, I mean, hold on, give me two seconds. The book of Deuteronomy. 16. Chapter 18 in verse 16. Yeah. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Yep. And the Lord said unto me, Excuse me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth. I started at the wrong spot. I'm sorry. Go on to nine. Verse nine. Yep. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Yep. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Here it come. Or that useth divination. Now the Lord said, don't deal with those that use divination. Go ahead. 
or an observer of times. That's into what's what they call it stuff, uh, horoscopes and all that. Said, don't deal with none of that stuff. Go ahead. Or an enchanter. Or enchanter. Or a witch. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Mm -hmm. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. So the Lord put all of these things in the Bible. Why? Why would he put them there if it's just make believe? He, did, he didn't put those things there for no reason. You... It's a, and that's the, I guess that's the main point of the class that I'm going to get to. We got to draw the line between you brothers, you sisters doing wicked things, doing evil, lazy, slothful um, things that are against the Bible and evil forces that do exist. It's a line between those two. And a lot of times what brothers and sisters do or what, pe what our people do is say, man, he got the devil on him. No, no, no. You got you on you. Let's read it again. Start at verse uh, 10. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, mm -hmm. or that use a divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, mm -hmm. or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard or a necromancer. Yeah. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So because of this abomination, the Lord drove these things out from before us. Meaning what? When we came out of Egypt, we was dealing with some of this stuff. So he said, we got to get all of this up out of y'all. I'm driving it out. Go ahead. Verse 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so, so, so to do. The Lord don't want us to do these things. The Lord does not want us to do those things. Let's go to Numbers now. Let's go to Numbers. What was the one again? Uh, 23, 23. Let's go to that. So just a just a synopsis on what's going on here in Numbers. It was a it was a a witch. I can't remember his name. What was his name? Balaam. That was trying to use a demonic force against us. And so it was a king that was trying. It was a king that hired Balaam to use this demonic force against us. Let's read the scripture. The Book of Numbers, chapter twenty-three, and verse twenty-three. This is Balaam talking. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Yep. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? Yep. Behold, the people shall rise up as, great, as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the slain. So what's going on here is that Balaam is saying, look, it's no divination against Israel right now. Right now they good. They keeping the commandments of God, they good. So the thing that is your shield, your buckler, your protector, your staff, your, I meaning your support, is keeping the commandments of God with the faith of Christ. Those are the things that's going to protect you from demonic forces that do currently exist in this world today and in times past. Let's go to this one. We'll go to, let's go to Saul. Let's go to 1 Samuel. It should be, I'm going to pull up my notes. First Samuel, chapter 28. Chapter 28. Start at verse 1. The book of First Samuel, chapter 28, and verse 1. Yeah. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. Mm-hmm. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. Mm -hmm. And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So according to the Bible... 
right? Saul was doing what he was supposed to do. He had put all those people that was into wizards and necromancing. He, he was killing them all off, getting them all out of it. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, mm. and his heart greatly trembled. Mm. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. The Lord answered him not. What verse you in? Verse 6. Go ahead. Neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Nor by Urim, nor by prophets. So Urim was like a, I don't know a way to say it, it like a magic eight ball or something. Like you would ask a question, and the Lord would give an answer through Urim. Uh, read that scripture again. Verse 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord. The I want Lord, verse 5. Verse 5. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid. Yep. And his heart greatly trembled. His, he was afraid and greatly troubled. So when you're afraid, when you're greatly troubled, it caused you to do extreme things. Let's go over here. We're going to go to, we're going to hold that. We're going to come right back. Let's go to Second Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter three. We'll start at verse twenty-one. Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter three, and verse twenty-one. Yeah. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. So all of those that are born of him, all of us, you brothers, you sisters in here, are the sons and daughters of Adam. So there is an innate wickedness that lies within you. Read that thing again. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Mm -hmm. Thus infirmity was made permanent. And the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. All right, all right, all right. We're going to read that one more time. Now, just really, let's focus in on every word this time. Come on. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. So the sin, the evil, was made permanent in you. It's there. It is in you. each one of you, brothers and sisters, is there. There is an ability... There is a mm, opportunity. It's something in there that's, that's, that's evil, that's within us all. Go ahead. And the law also, in the heart of the people. Now, the law of God, what's right and what's wrong is also there. Come on. In the heart of the people with the malignity. With the what? Malignity. With the malignity. Can I get the definition of malignity? Malignity with the malignity. Give me that. Number two, it says, uh, tending to produce. Hold on, let me read them one first. It says, this is malignant on Webster. It says, tending to produce death or deterioration. Number two, evil in nature, influence or effect, passionately and relentlessly aggressive, well, mal malevolent, aggressively malicious. All right, let's go back to the scripture. Don't take that down. I might pull it back. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 22. Yeah. Thus infirmity was made permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root. With the, with, so it's a, a root in us that's hateful, that's despiteful, that's just in you all. It's already there. Go ahead. So that the good departed away, uh -huh. and the evil abode still. And the evil abode still. It's still there. And each one of you brothers and sisters, because you are the sons and daughters of Adam, there is a level of evil that lies malignant in you all, in us all. I don't want to disclude myself. In us all. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, get, there, get the mic right. Read 2nd Ezra 4 and 30. Book of Second Ezra, chapter four, Wait, and verse thirty. Down. Come on, man, help me out. For the grain of evil seed have been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. So that's just what Captain said from the beginning, right? This thing has been sown in us from the beginning. It's woven in our system, right? It's in our heart, in our core, the fabric of our being. Read. 
And how much ungodliness hath it brought up unto this time? So how much ungodliness has that evil brought up to this time? We read the Bible, it brought up a whole bunch. We can read about all the different kind of stuff that Israel did right throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. Read. And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? So mm -hmm. it's going to be here until Christ return. Yep, 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 yep. Read that again, man. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. So from the beginning, that, that thing is there with each one of us today. So like I said from the beginning, man, don't, don't try to blame the devil. The devil made me do it. Don't try to blame the devil. No, you made you do it. Come on. And how much ungodliness hath it brought up unto this time? Mm-hmm. And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? Meaning that it's going to be y'all brothers and sisters going to continue to do wickedness until Christ returns. And we'll get that one about Paul at some point. Go ahead. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Ponder now by thyself how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed hath brought forth. Mm -hmm. And when the ears shall be cut down, which are without number... How great a floor shall they fill? Mm. Go Th ahead. Then I answered and said, How and when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore are, your, are our years few and evil? Our uh, years are few and evil. All right, let's go back to good old Saul. So the fear was there with Saul. Because of the fear, his malignant nature cause him to go further into wickedness. Let's see. Come on. Want me to start at verse 4? Yeah. First Samuel chapter 28 and verse 4. 5. Verse 5. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. Mm -hmm. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, mm. that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spir spirit at Endor. Now, who, how, you got to ask yourself. I, I was really thinking about this. If, if you told me, as the king told me to kill all of these wizards and get them all out of the country, how would you know to bring up to me about the evil, the wickedness? How would you know to bring up to me, hey, let's talk about a witch, man. You know any, any witches I can go deal with? How would you know that? I don't know. I'm going too deep. But go ahead. I'm going off the deep end. Verse 8. Yeah. And Saul discussed. What they call it, a contingency Excuse talk. Me. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went, and, and two men with him. And two of his boys went with him. Nobody stopped him and said, hey, man, this is wicked. This is evil. We are going to deal with witchcraft, literally. This is what we're doing right now. We think this is the way we're going to win a war. That's, that's what the, nobody thought, hey, this is not something we should do. I don't know. Go ahead. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me, and bring me him up whom I shall na name unto thee. Mm. And the woman said unto him. And the woman, see the woman, this is the first person to speak up. <laughs> Go ahead. Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Let's look up that word familiar, uh, familiar. What does it mean to be, have a familiar spirit? We'll just look up wizard. We'll look up wizards. Keep it simple. What is a wizard? Which it says, one skilled in magic, sorcerer. Number two is a very clever or skillful person. Uh, sage. Scroll down. Adjective. Nah, number two, what they say, having magical influence of power. It's crazy. So that's what a wizard is, y'all. And again, man, I'm from the South. I'm from the so South, man. I got stories. I don't know if I want to tell them, but I'm from the South. You know what I'm saying? My family is from that Shreveport, Louisiana area. You know, I spent time there. I have seen some interesting things. 
Nah, and it's funny, man, because all this stuff come back to you after you really, when I started reading, I was like, man, I did this one time go to this one place with, you know, my mom and all this stuff happened and what they call it, root. Yeah, the root on her. Crazy. Anyway, where I'm at? Verse 10. Verse 10, go ahead. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Mm -hmm. Then said the woman, whom, I, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up, Samuel. So Samuel, like he said in a few verses back, he, he's passed. He's died. Let's go to Genesis. I'll go to Genesis chapter 28. We'll read verse 12. The book of Genesis, chapter 28 and verse 12. Yeah. And he dreamed. And so this is the forefather Jacob, right? He having a dream. Go ahead. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. The angels of God were ascending and descending on this ladder. Meaning he saw spirits going back and forth on this ladder. Read that again. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. What verse am I at? Verse 12. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. So, so Jacob saw Abraham, his, his, his grandfather, that would be his grandfather, and he saw the Lord, the Most High God, saying, hey. What did he say? Read it again. Uh, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, uh -huh. and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. So those spirits going up and down, the Most High God was aware of that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 9. Yeah. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, mm -hmm. and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? So For the, the father of all spirits, was that the end of that verse? Yes, sir. The father of all spirits is the most high God. So even these evil demonic forces that exist, nothing was created without the most high God. Nothing. That's why when we read in, in Numbers, when it say there's no divination against the children of Israel, meaning what? We, if we keep the commandments of God, he'll keep us away from those type of things. Let's go back to Saul. First Samuel. Verse 11. Yeah, that sounds right. 1 Samuel chapter 28 and verse 11. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up, unto, bring up unto thee? So through her magic, through her wizardry, through her familiar spirit, she's going to, what she, I don't know what she's doing. You know what I'm saying? Throwing some bones or something. I don't know what she did. She brought up this evil, she brought up, I don't say brought up evil. She's bringing up Samuel or she's going to attempt to. Go ahead. And he said, bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. It shocked her. She said, oh, man. Go ahead. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Read that again. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. So now this woman, she opened up, I don't know a nice way to say it, a portal, a plane, another dimension where spirits are made unhideable. Because remember, Saul was, was hiding himself. And when she opened up this door, things were revealed to her. Even who Saul was that was standing before her in her eyes, it was made clear through her opening up this other thing that shouldn't have been opened. Everything. I don't say everything. But who those spirits were in her natural surroundings. She was able to see it. Even though he had hid himself, put on a hoodie, something, I don't know what he did. Read it again. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? 
And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. She saw gods ascending out of the earth. Just like when we just read in, in about what Jacob was saying. Go ahead. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up, mm -hmm. and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? So when you dealing with these um, familiar spirits, wizards, witchcraft, when you dealing with this stuff, guess what you're doing? you disquieting the spirits. That's what you're doing. Read that again. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed. For the Philistines make war against me, mm -hmm. and God has departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Mm -hmm. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? You see that? The Lord became his enemy. When the Lord's your enemy, it, like we just said, there's no divination against the children of Israel. Now the Lord's your enemy, all these spirits... These forces that create, e let's go to that in, second, in uh, Sirach. Sirach chapter 20, I pulled it up. Let me find it. Is that what it is? Yep, 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 yep. I wrote it down. Sirach 39, we'll start at verse 28. Sirach chapter 39, verse 20, start at 27. The book of Sirach, chapter 39, and verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly. Mm -hmm. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. All these things, everything that God created is good for the godly. Even these evil forces that we would see today, they are good. They work good for the godly. Go ahead. There read, be read that again. Verse 27, all these things are for good to the godly. Yep. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. But those, those forces can be turned to evil to the ungodly. Go ahead. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. There are what? There, there be spirits that are created for vengeance. It's spirits that are created for vengeance. When you step out of line outside of the Most High's plan, there are spirits that are created for you, for him to exact his vengeance on you. Read it again. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, mm -hmm. which in their fury lay on sore strokes. Yep. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. And appease the wrath. They, they, they comfort the wrath. See, the Lord wants, wants you to know that he's serious about what he said to do. Don't put yourself on that track. Don't dabble with your evil, with your wickedness. And again, we're going over these things about wizards and exorcisms and things like that. Not because I just want to be, what's the word, uh, sensational. It's people out here really dealing with this stuff. Some of your brothers, some of your sisters, as quiet it may be kept, grew up in these type of environments, seeing this type of stuff. Read that scripture one more time. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Mm -hmm which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that so made them. So stop it, stop it, stop it. If, you, if that's what you came up around, you, I know some of the Levites, you know what I'm saying, into that, that voodoo, Mahalalel, you know what I'm saying? Even some Benjamin, right? Y'all be doing some of that stuff over there, man. Oh, I know, I know Issachar ain't talking down there. every tribe got to get it. Now yeah, that Benjamin every got tribe, brother. every tribe, yeah. Issachar got them candles. Yep, that's, yep, that's, yep. That's, that's, nah, that's the, the, You know what I'm saying? Every, every tribe got to get it now. I'm going to call everybody. The Northern Kingdom got them candles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everybody mom got some candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Judah in the South with roots. You know what I'm saying? Roots, Benjamin do the stuff. same thing as Levi kind of. So we all do it. What's that What's that thing called over there in uh, in Mexico? Uh, Santa Mort. See, she says something else. The holy death. The we holy. call it. We call death holy. See what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I mean, that's wicked. Hey, yeah, they got they got them candles, and when they when they run out of wax, they turn them to kitchen glasses. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. But yeah, they got that the Day of the Dead. They got all type of stuff over there, man. 
And it's this one, I didn't get to pull it up, but it's this one thing they do further in the South America where they take this drink, I forgot what it's called, and they hallucinate the whole night. You know what I'm talking about? There you go. What's it called? Say it on the mic. Can you pull it up right quick? Why you know what it's called, JDL? Why? Because <laughs> I was in the world. Ayahuasca. 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 Pull it up if you can, man. How You know how we spell it? I don't know. Who I got a Northern Kingdom brother over there. Hit a He probably know how to spell. He put it right up. Look at him. <laughs> he pulled it right up. Good looking Hit a Kel. He knew exactly what it was. Dang. Ayahuasca. Click on that thing. Nah, go back, man. Yeah, we see the plant. I want the, what's that? Health. What is that? What is ayahuasca experience benefits and side effects? You might have heard stories about people traveling to foreign destinations to experience taking ayahuasca, uh, psychotic brew, psychoactive. Uh, psychoactive brew. See, that's why you should read, uh, Yasadi. I'm uh, messing I words all up. Typic <laughs> Go ahead. Typically, these anecdotes tend to focus on the immediate effects that take place during an ayahuasca trip. That's what they call it, a trip, because you enter into a whole different... A whole, just like we just read about that witch that entered into that different, that's what's going on when you're taking this. And we again, like I said, we read witches and familiar spirits and all that stuff thinking it's just, uh, you know, I don't know, using a Ouija board or something. It's more to it. It's all types of things you could be doing. You could be in the horoscopes, like we just said, taking the ayahuasca. You could be using drugs. Right, what they call it, Molly and PCP and wet and all that stuff. You start seeing spirits and stuff moving around you. Read that thing again. Typically, these anecdotes tend to focus on the immediate effects that take place during an ayahuasca trip. Uh -huh. Some of which are enlightening, while others are downright distressing. Some are, some are enlightening and some of them you get in there, you see some stuff. You can't even, you walking backwards for the rest of your life. Go ahead. However, scientists have uncovered several long-term health benefits of taking ayahuasca. So what, what they are saying is America is directly involved in anything they can do when it comes to witchcraft. I'm just saying straight. Like, that's what they do. Pull me up what Ronald Reagan's... Um, nah, nah, nah. Ronald Reagan had a... A witch in his cabinet that he would make, that he would talk to before he made world decisions. It was Nancy Reagan and Ronald Reagan. They had a witch that they would use. I'm not making this stuff up. Uh, to wax to witches, what they say. Lots of strange happen. There you go. Click that. What that, what that one say? That's the Washington Post. You gotta sign in. Oh man. Mm -mm -mm. The first lady who brought in the cult. There you go. Click on that one down there. The vice. Vice. Go down. Vice, 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 vice. The first ladies who brought the occult to the White House. Over the years, several presidents' wives, including Mary Todd Lincoln and Nancy Reagan, turned to spiritual practices like uh, seances and astrology. This is what was going on in the White House. This is what they was doing. When they would talk to their husbands, they say, let me go get the astrologer. Let's do a seance. And again, man, we read these things. Go ahead, go ahead, JDL. There's a lot of people who are really deep into this. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I had a coworker, she would be like, if you tell me what time you was born and where you was born, I could break all this down. So those people who really like make their life Every decision, who they date, yeah, what I'm, money I'm, they spend is I'm all Aquarius. based on that. I'm Aquarius. I'm yep. Pisces. My lucky number is seven. You know what I'm saying? Everybody lucky number seven. Whatever, man. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> let's read on. It says, before emails or Begazi or Blue Gap, uh, Blue Gap dress, Hillary Clinton dealt with uh, much less controversial stains on her character which was uh, reportedly that she what liked to gab with the high-profile dead people. Dang, it's a Hillary Clinton was doing it. I ain't never read this. I ain't never read this. I got you, Cap. Go ahead. In the 1996 book, The Choice, 
how Bill Clinton won, author Rob Woodward, no stranger to a good scandal, wrote that the former first lady communicated with Eleanor Roosevelt and Mahatma Gandhi during her husband's term, what though not heck? Jesus, as that would have been, according to Woodward's retelling, too personal. I don't, I don't even, I don't, I'm not saying none of this is true. I, I've never read this. But I have, the, there is a documentary, you can click off of this, there is a documentary uh, called The Reagans where they go through it, where... Uh, Nancy Reagan and Ronald Reagan, they showed them going in and, and talking to the actual astrologers uh, before they made decisions. And uh, the point I was making, again, when we read in, in Revelation to say that the devil gave them his power. This was telling you, this is how they make decisions, through astrology, through the worship of other things outside of the God of this Bible. Um... It was another thing I want to say, too. It slipped my mind. Okay, we'll go back to uh, where I'm at. Samuel. I, was, I want to say, yeah, they, I think it slips. Move out. I don't know. Go ahead. The, the book of First Samuel, chapter 28, and verse 15. Yeah. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed. For the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Go, let's go back to, uh, what was that, Deuteronomy 18? Go back to that. I think it was uh, 18 and 10. Is that where we was at? Let's go back to that right quick. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want that exactly. Verse 12. Verse 12. Yeah. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times. There you go. If these nations, America, they hearken unto diviners. They worship the devil. Oh, that's what I want to say. It's another documentary. I think it's on Netflix. I think it's called The Brotherhood. I don't know if y'all seen that, but it's this, this house outside of uh, the White House where all these senators and congressmen go. You know what I'm talking about? The family. The family that's what it's called? Yeah, they all go to this house. And yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Go ahead. It's like they all go to this house and live there for a period of time? Like, yep. And then they... Uh, they, into, they into some form of Christianity yeah. and witchcraft. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Christianity, and I'm just going to tell you straight, Christianity is witchcraft, and we'll get into that. Christianity itself, your mamas, your daddies that's in the Christian church today are into witchcraft. That's what it is. There's no nice way to say it. Uh, read it again where I'm at. For verse 14. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times. Oh, that's what I want to say, too. So when you read... Um, before again, this is going back before the truth. I had read the Quran, and it was this book I read called um, Islam and Christianity: The Contrast. The Contrast, and it breaks down the Islamic verses or the or the verses in the Quran in comparison to the verses in the Bible, and it compares them back and forth. Right? It's uh, a thing in there called in the Quran called the Satanic verses, where Muhammad was worshiping the devil. Can you Google that right quick? The, the satanic verses. They took it out of the Quran uh, not long ago, but it used to be in there where Muhammad was worshiping uh, three evil gods of the Kadesh tribe because he's Kadesh. He wanted to get his he wanted to get his people to worship Allah, but they was worshiping these three evil spirits. The Kadesh tribe was, which is where he's from. Okay, click on that, the satanic verses. Okay, it says the satanic verses is Samuel Rushdie's fourth novel, uh, first published and inspired by part by Muhammad, right? As with his previous book, Rushdie used magical realisms and relied on the contemporary events of the people created characters, the title. Uh, it tell you where they are. Oh, there you go, right there, okay. The title refers to the satanic verses, a group of Quranic verses, talking about in the Quran, they refer to three pagans 
Mecha Goddess, Alta, Yuza, and Manat, the part of the story that deals with the Satanic Verses was based on the account from the historian al Waqad and al Tariq. So it tells you in the Quran they had these verses. They took them out though, where Muhammad was worshiping those three gods. I've always heard like a lot. It was two hundred over two hundred gods. I'm gonna go to that okay, next. Okay, boom. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. no, no. There's over like two hundred gods in total that they were worshiping. So Allah is just a way to reference all of them. All of them. We're gonna go to it. Let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon. What's the one where he gave them the sun and the moon to worship? Go to that Wisdom of Solomon, eighteen and four. Let's start at verse three. Yeah. Started to. The book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. But for that they did not hurt them now, of whom they had been wrong before. They thanked them and besought them pardon for that they had been enemies. So it's talking about the other nations. They was enemies to us, but us as Israel being whatever's wrong with us, we always want to seek pardon for the other nations. Lord, don't hurt them. Save them. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with us. Go ahead. Instead, whereof thou so instead of the Lord pardon them, this is what the Lord did for him. Go ahead. Thou gavest them a burning pillar of fire, the sun, both to be a guide of the unknown journey uh -huh. and an harmless sun to entertain them honorably. So what they did, they started worshiping the sun and the moon. These other nations, that's what they worship. Christianity specifically is sun worship. That's what it is. Every day that they got in their um, Christianity. Um, I don't know, pantheon of, of, of hella days or holidays, as they would say, is related to the sun. Easter is based off of the sun. If you read about Easter, the original creation of Easter is when the sun crosses uh, the, the, uh, the equator. That's what it's about. That's what Easter is lined up to. Christmas is when the sun uh, is at the apex of the sky. It's when it reaches its highest point throughout the year. That's what it's about. Go ahead. Go ahead. Damn, I'm going to tell a story. Uh, somebody I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Not uh, you. Not me. Somebody, somebody I know. Somebody else. Yeah. Right? When you look at fraternal organizations, right? And even the ceremonies they do in like churches, right? I don't know if your church did it, but the deacons would start in the back or something like that, and then they might march in. Mm. All of that, right? It goes back to the sun. Mm. So all, even all like the rituals they do in like fraternal, you ever seen people like come out, right? Like they, they pledge in and then they come out. All of it goes back to like sun rituals that people used to do. So in church, uh, when I was a child in church, right, specifically, I would carry a candle and it was called being an acolyte. You would carry a candle and you would light the candles before service started, mm. right? All of that is in reference to the church. So when you look at Christianity, every, all of those ceremonies and things like that is witchcraft. It's witchcraft. That's what it is. Um... Can you pull up um, Islam or, yeah, Islam. I just, put, just type in Islam. I just want or the symbol of Islam. I just want y'all to see it. Symbols of Islam. There you go. There you go. Slide over to the right. So, like JDL was mentioning before, right, Islam, what, when you read about what's known as the flight to Mecca, um, Muhammad went into went into Mecca. They had this temple with it was three hundred plus gods. He destroyed all those gods with the exception of Allah, which was the god of the moon. That's what that's what this means. And you'll you'll have an ignorant Negro tell you like Allah, Abba Father. All these different words mean the same thing, and they don't. Allah is specifically in reference to the moon god. That's what it was. So they worship, again, like I said, it's all <clears throat> witchcraft. It all goes back to astrology, which is the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars. That's what it goes back to. It's all witchcraft. Let's go back. Where I'm at? Wisdom of Solomon. I mean, uh, First Samuel. I'm sorry. Nope, I was in Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 18. Verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 14. Yeah. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times. These nations, the, the so-called Arabs today, the so-called Edomites, Caucasians today, they all are what? Read that again. 
hearkened unto observers of times. They all hearken. That's what this is. They're guiding light to the decisions that they make. Witchcraft. Go ahead. And unto diviners. Mm -hmm. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. We shouldn't do that. Go ahead. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, mm -hmm. of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So the prophet that the Lord raised up unto us was Christ, right? And it's been many prophets throughout the Bible. The main prophet was Christ. Now, why does that matter? What, what, what these diviners and these, these people that's in the witchcraft tend to do is they want to look into the specifics in reference to them. Right. What is it about me? Tell me about me. Tell me about what's going to happen with me. God is telling us what's going to happen to us as a nation. How do we get out of this situation as a nation? It's not personal. It's about us as a whole. Some of y'all praying for lottery and all that different stuff, man. That's selfish. Let's go back to First uh, Samuel. For Samuel, chapter 28, and verse 16. Yeah. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? Mm -hmm. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. Here it come. And tomorrow and shall... And tomorrow. He said, the next day this was going to happen to you. You done, you done call for the witch. Oh, you're going to get the answer. You're going to get the answer you didn't want to hear. Here it come. Shall thou and thy sons be with me? He said, you're going to die tomorrow. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Then Saul fell straightway all that's along... Good, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Let's look at, I believe it's chapter 8. Let me, get, let me double check. I think it's Luke. Matter of fact, let's go to, let's go to Tobit. Let's go to Tobit. Uh, I'm the worst at taking notes. Tobit. Matter of fact, go to 2nd Ezra 14, 14 real quick. Oh, I found the scripture in Tobit I want to go to. You said 14, 14? Yes, sir. Second right. Ezra chapter 14 and verse 14. Yeah. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. So cast off the weak thoughts, the weak nature. You got to take those mortal Thoughts. It's not all about you and you being selfish and you want what you want to have. You got to be able to go. You got to be able to look in the scriptures and say, how do I get this malignant, evil nature that's naturally in me off me? Read that again. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to flee from these times. So those mortal thoughts. That you just you just all about self. That's what the mortal thoughts are. And when it comes to diving, diving into that witchcraft and to those things, that's what Saul was doing. He had mortal thoughts. He was worried about just he should have he should have been able to say, you know what? I didn't execute the Lord's judgment. Let me repent from that. The Lord is gracious. Let's go to Tobit. Chapter three. I believe that's what I want. Which verse? Uh, duh, 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 duh. I had read it last night. What she thought. Yep, chapter three. We're gonna start at verse. We'll start at verse seven. The book of Tobit, chapter three, in verse seven. Yeah. It came to pass the same day that in Ecbatan, a city of Media, Sarah, the daughter of Raguel was also reproached by her father's maids. Let's see why she was reproached, why her father's maids hated her. Come on. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed mm. before they had lain with her. Dost thou not know, said they, that thou hast str strangled thine husbands? Thou hast had already seven husbands. 
Neither was thou named after any of them. Pull up Asmodeus. Read that one more time. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Asmodeus the evil spirit had killed before they had lain with her. So Asmodeus the evil spirit was an evil spirit around his sister. Asmodeus, to say Asmodeus, uh, we'll skip down. Also Asmovidius, Ashma, Diva, Amasi, is a prince of demons, or in the Judaic Islamic lore, the king of earthly spirits. Uh, mostly known from the Deuteronomical book of Tobit. What is that word? I can't. Man, I'm Deuterocanonical. Hard. There you go. That sounded good, man. Of Tobit, in which he is the primary antagonist. Scroll down a little bit, so you see that that's what the the what they made. Look at that Zoroastrianism. Look at that. That's your favorite word right there. Um, let's <laughs> read that part right there. Etymology. Yes, sir. The name Asmodai is believed to derive from Avistan language, where uh, Asma Deva, where Asma means wrath, and Deva signifies demon. Mm. While the Deva Asma is thus Zoroastrianism's demon of wrath, and is also well attested as such, the, co the compound Asma Deva is not attested in scripture. All right, let's go back now. Let's go back to Tobit. Tobit chapter 3 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed before they had lain with her. Mm. Does thou not, excuse me, does thou not know, said they, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Thou hast had already seven husbands, neither was thou named after any of them. Mm. Wherefore dost thou beat us for them? If they be dead, go thy way after them. <laughs> they said, this, the, 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 the maids is dealing with her, man. They said, look, if the husband's dead, you might as well go and kill yourself too. Go and kill yourself. That's what they told her. Go ahead. Let us never see of thee either son or daughter. Mm. When she heard these things, she was very sorrowful, so that she thought to have strangled herself. And she said, I am the only daughter of my father, and if I do this, it shall be a reproach unto him. And I shall bring his old age with sorrow unto the grave. Mm. Then she prayed toward the window and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord my God, and thine holy and glorious name is blessed and honorable forever. Let all thy works praise thee forever. So she said, so even in her going through what she's going through, she still is praising God. Go ahead. And now, O Lord, I set mine eyes and my face toward thee and say, Take me out of the earth that I may hear no more the reproach. There we go. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man, mm. and that I never polluted my name nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. I am the only daughter of my father. Neither hath he any child to be his heir, neither any near kinsman, nor any son of his alive, to whom I may keep myself for a wife. My seven husbands are already dead, and why should I live? Let's go to uh, Job. <clears throat> We're going to go to Job, chapter 2, verse 1. Book of Job, chapter 2, and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. So before the Most High God came the angels. Go ahead. And Satan came also among them. And who came also? And Satan came also among them so satan also came so again these evil spirits are still in subjection to the most high god and like i said I, when i was thinking about this class i was saying i don't want to belittle that demonic and evil forces exist because they do read on and satan came also to pre amongst them to present himself before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan. Now the Lord is talking to Satan. Go ahead. From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Mm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? So just like we were just reading about this sister Sarah, this spirit for whatever reason was dead. To line up the position that's going to happen. Let's go back to Tobit. We're going to look at chapter 6 now. We'll start at verse 6. 
The book of Tobit, chapter 6 and verse 6. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarias. So this brother, uh, Tobias, got an angelic force with him, right? Azarias. Go ahead. Which to, is Raphael. To what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the flesh, mm -hmm. of the fish? And he said unto him, Touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman, and the party shall be no more vexed. Mm. As for the gall, it is good to anoint a man that hath, whiten, that hath whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. So, again, man, when we, like I said, on these, these uh, scary movies, you see them throwing holy water on them and crosses on their foreheads and all this stuff. Look. <laughs> Are they using the devil to cast out the devil? That's what I'm finna say. I got this book, and I, I found the pages. I didn't even send you the pictures, but it's a book called Two Babylons. They break down where holy water come from. Like, it's demonic. It's a demonic force. I pulled it up, man. I guess I should go ahead and read it right quick. Yeah, I didn't send them the pictures, though. I forgot. I'll send them to you later, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was page 138, man. Let me see if I can find it right quick. Say something, uh, Azariah. Go ahead. I know, you, I know you're holding back over there. Go ahead. Let it, let it rip. Tell, tell them about the, the thing. You want to pull up the thing right quick? Oh, yeah. All right, so. Pull up that thing right quick. It was a, uh, what building is it? 930 10th Street in downtown San Diego. Can you, did, uh, did you send it to him? Uh, no, I sent it you to You sent it to me? Send it to him. I'm going to send it to you right now. So I was delivering mail in downtown San Diego, right? I was on it. Well, this when I first got down there a few years ago, and I'm doing this route, and I, uh. I go to 930 10th Street, just a building. I don't know nothing about it, and I walked in there, right? And it <clears throat> it used to be a it used to be a church. It's been, been a few things, so I walk in the building and the door shuts, right? Hold just, on, who shut the door? The, the door just shut. It just you know you walk in there, the door. Who shuts. shut the door though? I don't know. <laughs> we don't get to that, right? <laughs> the door shuts behind me. Now I'm I'm in the foyer area, and there's a little window up here, so there's a little light coming in, but it's still still dark. It's still kind of dark in there. Not too spooky, but dark. So you walk in the foyer area and off to the right in the back of the room, that there's a little cubby hole where the mailbox is in. So I start delivering the mail, right? <laughs> and I and I'm looking around, I'm like, what the, 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 there was something in there, right? I'm looking around, I'm trying to deal, now I'm getting kind of scared, right? Because you can feel the presence of something there, right? I'm tripping, right? I'm doing it. So I shut the mailbox, I scurry over to the door, I, I'm looking behind me, all paranoid and, and stuff. So I go out there, right? I leave out the room. I leave out the mail room. I'm like, man, I don't know what the hell just happened in there. But, uh, but I, uh, uh, one thing's for certain and two things for sure that I'm not going back in that building, <laughs> right? So I go, I go on and I, I see the dude that does it route regular. I say, hey, man, you ever go on 930 10th Street? And he goes, yeah. I said, man, what's up with that building? He said, man, that thing's haunted. So then I tell, I tell Ananiah and he tells me he, he found this article on this building. So in this building, there's three spirits in there. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. Uh, uh, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, wait, I don't know. There's something going on in there. Something going on in there. So probably about a month or two later, I'm across the street looking at that building like I always do, saying to myself, you will never get your mail as long as I'm on this route. <laughs> right? And I see your sister come out of there. It's a Saturday. So I run across the street. I said, hey, sis, can I talk to you for a minute? She said, yeah, what's up? I said, hey. What's up with that building? She said, you been in there before? I said, yeah, I ain't going back in there. She said, yeah, there's something in there. I said, you don't be scared in there? She said, nah. She said, the spirits, they'll let you know they're there, but they don't mess with you, but you know they're there. And I'm telling you, I ain't never going back in that building again. I don't play, I don't play, I don't play with stuff like that at all. I don't care if they're good, bad. Casper to the exorcist. I don't want no parts of it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Is it, nah, look, don't say that, Cornelius. I, I say, Cornelius, we're looking, we're looking for Cornelius. School, yeah. Cornelius. Is it big enough? You can, you can play if you guy. want there, guy. I know. Listen to this guy, man. 10th Avenue uh, Theater, Art Center. Uh, scroll down. What did it say? Is it, was it something in particular you wanted? You can just read it right there. What, what, what it says is in there. It, it was, who, who's in there? Read that, uh, Isadia. Uh, where it says claims of paranormal or ghosts. Start right there. Okay, yes, sir. Claims of the paranormal or ghosts are the current 10th Avenue Theater Art Center. According to the 10th Avenue Theater's website, four ghosts are suspected to haunt various portions of the building. Uh -huh. Of the four, three of those haunts are intensely specific. Yep. The ghost of a British lieutenant, 
The yeah. falling death of a girl named Missy. A suicidal grief-stricken Baptist pastor. Now, I don't know which one of them clowns was over there messing with me, but <laughs> one of those three was coming over to check out old Azariah, and they got my undivided attention, and I'll never go back in there again. Uh, <laughs> this book right here is called The Two Babylons, right? Uh, this is page 138, uh, kind of in the center. It says, uh, Father Newman himself admits regard to holy water. That is, water impregnated with salt and concentrated. And many other things that were, as he says, the very instrument and appendages of demon worship that they were all of pagan origin, sanctified by adaptation into the church. So I'll tell you right here that they use this, they use what, what we know as holy water for demon worship. Give me that scripture. Where does it say, how can Satan cast out Satan? Where is, that? Where Ma is that? Matthew, I was just reading it. Matthew started at 25. Matthew 12 and 25. Look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 25. Yeah. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided. Start at 24. Verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Mm. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Mm. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then th his kingdom stand? So you got to understand, all these spirits, all these evil spirits are subject to the most high. That's it. All these demonic forces, these evil forces that exist are subject unto the most high God. Let's go to, go ahead, go ahead. Go to Isaiah 45 and uh, start at 6. Mm -hmm. Just to uh, land back off what Cap said. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and oh, verse. Start, start at 5. And verse 5. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. So God said there is nobody standing by her, beside him, man, woman, devil, Allah, anybody, read. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. So he's, 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 he's emphasizing a point. But here we go, read. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So we just read it in, in Job. The, uh, the Lord gave the devil permission to go test Job's spirit, mm -hmm. right? He couldn't have done that uh, without the Lord's permission. Right. It, Christ even said, if I be Satan, how am I casting out Satan? Yep. There's, 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 there's always good and there's always evil. There's always light and there's always darkness. But all of that is under one umbrella, which is the, is the, Father the Lord. Of spirits. Yeah, yep. the Father of Spirits, absolutely. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So those things, those things, those evil communications that exist today, they open you up to these evil things, to these wicked things. And so we'll see things again like Christianity, like I just told you, all right? It's also witchcraft. It's modern day witchcraft. You got to ask yourself, why is there so much divorce in the Christian church? Well, the Christian church is in opposition to what the Bible says. So all the things that happen demonically or against what God puts in place come, come out of that, right? They got what, what they got in the Catholic church, child molesters and stuff like that. That's obviously against God. That's how we know that that is a satanic witchcraft force behind that, right? You got, uh, what, what we got? We got uh, abortion going on in there. We got people sleeping with each other, uh, adultery going on in there. We got all these different things happening inside the Christian. And, and even when you look at those so-called um, Islam, what are they into over there? You've been over there. What are they into? Go on, say it. Go on, say it. That man love. They into that. They into homosexuality over there. They like that as man quiet thing. as it may be kept, a lot of those Arabs 
mm-hmm. that's into Islam, they're into homosexuality. Men are for pleasure, yep. women are for business. That's what they say. That's what they that's what's inside of that that um that Islam. That's what's inside of that. All of those things are opposition to what the Bible says should be happening. That's how we know that that is a satanic and evil source of witchcraft right there. That's what Christianity and Islam and any other religion you can think of, it don't come from the Bible. It don't. Read that again. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So even how they utilize the Bible, they, we say, they say that all the time in Christianity, right? The devil know the Bible too. Yeah, he know the Bible. He's going to use that thing uh, backwards to create destruction and disruption amongst our community. That's why Christianity is running rapid today because there's no accountability to nothing that's going on in, 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 in reference to the Bible. Let's go back to Tobit. Get that video ready for me, too. Where was I at? I think verse 9, 6 and 9, I think. We'll jump down to... Doo, 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 doo. Jump down to 15. Tobit chapter 6 and verse 15. Yeah. Then the angel said unto him, Dost thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee, that thou shouldest marry a wife of thy own kindred? Wherefore hear me, O my brother, for she shall be given thee to wife, and make thou no reckoning of the evil spirit, for this same night shall she be given thee in marriage. Mm -hmm. And when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take the ashes of perfume, and shalt lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish, and shalt make a smoke with it. And the devil shall smell it and flee away, and never come again any more. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you, and pray to God which is merciful, and wh who will have pity on you, and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning, and thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose that, that she shall bear thee children. Now when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was effectually adjoined to her. Let's jump over to chapter 8. Verse 1. Starting 1, yep. Toby chapter 8 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. And as he went, he now would... Now remember, she had an evil spirit that whenever the, the, her husband or the man that she was supposed to marry would go into her, this evil spirit would kill them. Come on. And as he went, he remembered the words of Raphael. He remembered what the angel had told him. And took the ashes of the perfumes and put the heart and the liver of the fish thereupon and made a smoke therewith. There there mm -hmm. The witch, the witch smell when the evil spirit had smelled, he fled into the utmost parts of Egypt and the angel bound him. You see that that evil spirit fled away. That evil spirit fled away. And again, I'm not I'm not showing y'all this so y'all can be like, oh, I need to go get some fish and 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 eyeballs and burn them. Like, no, that's not what, what I'm telling y'all. I want you to know that these things exist, but it's a difference. Again, the main point, again, like I said, it's a difference between this evil and the evil that's malignant in us all. It's a difference between that thing. You finna say something, Anna? I thought you were finna say something. My fault. You good? Oh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. So I want, I'm gonna show you somehow how, how, the, how the difference, well, an example of how the difference is, right? Let's go to James chapter one. James chapter one, and this what this was happened. This what this what this what happens. Let me get it. James one, and uh, cause that that root of evilness that's in us, right, is there. We don't we don't we don't spoke about it, right. And and this this what happens. Uh, James one, and uh, uh, twenty. What am I looking for? Thirteen. Nah. Uh, Where it say um, he didn't make us evil. No, uh, no, here, here it goes. Uh, 22, start right there. James chapter 1 and verse 22. No, 23. Verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So this is what happens every day, right? We wake up, right, and uh, we wash our face and, and, and we say our prayers and, and, and we, we, we step out into the world, right? Read. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So if if uh, if, that, if if that 
root of bitterness or sin or whatever it is if you're a, if you if you're a covetous person if you're mm -hmm. if you have lust in your heart mm -hmm. if, if you have hate in your heart for your brother if whatever it is i can't name them all but i'm just trying to make if you're an alcoholic it's lying what, malignant in you it's there it's yep. there when, when you if, if you're not a hearer and do other word right that that devil that's walking around there like it says in peter that's seeking to devour souls mm -hmm. he's going to get you so if if, if you if 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 whatever you, if if you love the tall women and you walk out your house and you're not here doing do another world, guess what's gonna guess what spirit's gonna creep into you? Mm -hmm. The spirit of lust. Yep. If, if if you got hate in your heart for your sister and you walk out the house and and you see that woman at your job, you're like I can't stand this old uh, yep. that, that that spirit of hate is gonna come upon you, right? Yep. And those are spirits and th those things happen every day, yep. right? But that's different from. It's, I'm just making a difference. So so that's the devil in you. That's the devil in you in comparison to. The devil, yes, the sir. evil spirit. Absolutely. Let's go to this. Let's go to this. Let's go to Luke chapter uh, 8, verse 26 real quick. All right, I'm going to click on the video right after we read this. Come on. You got the video ready? The, All right, cool. the book of Luke chapter 8 and verse 26. Yep. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. Mm -hmm. And when he went forth to land, there met, with him, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time. And wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Mm -hmm. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Yep. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. So this, this, this devil that was within him... Gave him some type of absorbent amount of strength. All right, let's go to the video. Son Maginot performed his most high-profile exorcism on a mother and her three children who lived in a home right here in the town of Gary, south of Chicago. After making headlines as the portal to hell, the house was demolished. This is where the family believes they became possessed. What started as persistent swarms of flies on the porch transpired into strange noises at night. And ultimately, the mother's 12-year-old daughter levitating above her bed, unconscious. The last night we stayed in the house, that's when it was throwing my children around. Pause it, pause Within it, pause months. it. This this the reason I chose this video specifically because it's our people that say they experienced this. So I would think our our people would be less likely to be uh, putting on to get on TV. You think what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they'd be so a lot less likely to be putting on just for the camera. You know what I'm saying? This is a house they done bought. You don't think they want to live in this house? What would be the yeah? What would be the uh, benefit of them lying? Of this. Now, what we can obviously see is that they caught up in the natural witchcraft of Christianity, right? The woman got blonde hair and all those different things. Uh, she already into that. Go ahead. So moving into this rental home with her kids, Latoya Amons knew something wasn't right. It picked up a lamp from out of my bedroom and threw it into the living room. It was throwing chairs. They were throwing chairs. Father Maginot was called to the house to speak with the mom finding what he believed to be several signs of demonic possession, including unexplainable footprints around the house. I went to the bathroom, I went to the kitchen. You know, if there was a leak or something, they, they weren't there. They were just around her, you know, but they were wet. And I don't remember seeing them before. During that conversation, were there any sort of key red flags that made you concerned that this was something? I took my crucifix, put it on her. She began convulsing. And then I took it off, and she stopped convulsing. Did, did it say that the demonic force came out of her? Nah, it was like, hey, what's up? Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And I said, you are possessed. You have an aversion to holy objects. What's claimed to have happened here at the local hospital is disturbing Pause and backed it. up by many. So this is so th this was the main thing. So the, these doctors and nurses claim and put this in their report that they saw the same things. I'm like, all right, well, all these people ain't going to just lie about this. Go ahead. Medical staff who say they witnessed it in this report 
The seven-year-old son started making growling sounds while his eyes rolled back into his head. His older brother then walked up a wall backwards, flipping over his grandmother. The nurses were standing in the door, and they backed up saying, oh my God, oh my God. Whose room was this? The children's grandmother, Rosa Campbell, gave police a tour through the house, which officers recorded. She saw a foreman. She describes a series of violent occurrences. Pick him up and throw him into this deep freezer, head first. Like, nobody's going to believe this, Toya. I knew it. They're going to think everybody's crazy. And that's the lingering question. Do demons exist? You can pause it. And you can take it down. So these, I, you can take it off the screen. These these people say that this happened to them. You know what I'm saying? Let's go back to the scriptures. Luke chapter 8 and verse 30. Yeah. And Jesus asked him, saying, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Mm -hmm. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Mm -hmm. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Mm -hmm. then, they, then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So these things can affect you to where you lose your mind. You enter into a place, I don't know what this, this man was doing, right? I'm not saying he was or wasn't dabbling in witchcraft, but I don't know what happened to where these things took him out of his mind. And again, this is this is... This is not something I'm saying again because I'm trying to take it lightly. These things exist, man. You travel into the different portals and worlds of even of the internet and you'll be looking and watching something and it'll pull you into something that you shouldn't be in. And I'm telling y'all this again. I'm giving y'all fair warning of this. Not again because I'm trying to be sensational, but because our people, they are, uh, what's the word? Curious. Let's go to Solomon. Matter of fact, let's go to Solomon. Sirach, I mean Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Uh, it should be, I wrote it down last night. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25. King Solomon, a man with all the wisdom in the world. Watch what he did. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly. So what did he want to know? And to know the wickedness of folly. Solomon wanted to learn even about wickedness. This is Solomon. Go ahead. Even of foolishness and madness. Pull up the seal of Solomon. The seal of Solomon. Read that one more time where I'm at. Verse 25. Okay. I applied my heart to know and to search yep. and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly. He wanted to know the wickedness of folly. He wanted to know all about wickedness. He had a lot of time on his hands. Became curious with all the time on his hands. Go ahead. Even of foolishness and madness. Even with foolishness and madness. Out of his right mind. Smooth gone. So today what we see on the so-called... Uh, Jewish flag, they call it, what do they call it? The Star of David. It's not the Star of David. It is the seal of Solomon. It is witchcraft. That's what it is. That is what you seeing that they have. And this is what Solomon was into. And this is what they are into. Again, like I said, Revelations 2 and 9 tells you. Go ahead. What, JDL? Go ahead. Oh, Revelations 2 and 9. Don't forget it. The book of Revelations, chapter 2 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. They are not. Who are they? 
but are the synagogue of Satan. There you go. That's where they get their power from. What you see? What that, what's that thing they got over there right now? The Iron Dome. How they create a, a, whip, a weapon to destroy weapons in the sky? Who does that? Go ahead, Jenny. I just wanted to hit the Solomon point. Read out Proverbs 18 and 1. Real quick. Because Cap keeps saying, like, brothers dabble with this, right, and deal with it. And a lot of times people will say, how would I even end up in this place? Mm. Right? Proverbs 18 and 1. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man, having separated himself. So the first thing that's going to happen before you go into witchcraft, you're going to separate yourself from the congregation. Damn. You're going to stop calling. You're going to stop dealing with people. Go ahead. Seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. That's how it happened for Solomon. He didn't have a gang of people around him dealing with this. He was dealing with it, right, and those different cults. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be his advisors of Israel dealing with him and saying, hey, we finna go over here and do this and everybody backing him up. No, he had to separate himself from them and deal with people in that level of deal weakness. Deal with people in that level of weakness, like we was reading about even with Saul. Exactly. He pulled, he didn't pull his whole army aside and say, hey, let's go find a witch. He had two, two brothers that he wanted to talk to about that thing. And, a disguise, and he disguised himself. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. The seal of Solomon. Read that for me. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 19. Mm -hmm. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? So when, you, when you're bored, you're curious, right? You seek unto those familiar spirits, those wiz wizards that peep. And again, it say peep because, again, the true one, that the, the, the only one that can give you the entire foresight of the future is the most high God. They peep into just the stuff that's in, in consideration of their self. And that's what Christianity do. They try to divine money into you and all this type of stuff. I see a blessing coming on you. You're going to get $5,000 in your bank account tomorrow. That type of stuff, man. Let's go back to Christ. Where I'm at, Luke. Luke 8. And I was at uh, verse 30. Go or ahead. Verse 31. 31, go ahead. Luke chapter 8 and verse 31. And they besought him that nah, he... No, nah, no, nah, that's not it. No. It said he was in his right mind again. 35. 35. Yeah. Verse 35. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, mm -hmm. sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they were afraid because he was in his right mind. All right. Let's go to Judas. Give me John. Chapter 13. Matter of fact, Luke, Luke 21. Start with Luke 21, and then we'll go to John. John, I mean, Luke 21, start at verse 1. The book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 1. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. No, no, no. Luke 22. I'm sorry. Luke 22, 1. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 22 and verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought out sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Yep. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Mm -hmm. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Mm -hmm. And they were glad. And covenanted to give him money. So now it says Satan entered into him. So there was already an evil, lying, malignant in Judas. He was covetous. Right? That's why the Lord put him in the position to handle the money so he could fight that spirit that was innately in him. Read it again. Start from the top. Nah, read verse 2. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the chief priests and scribes saw how they might kill him, for they feared the people. So you got you to gotta really put your, your mind into what's going on here. They putting the word out. Right? They say they saw how they could kill him. They put the word out. Hey, man, anybody got any info 
on how we can get rid of this guy? Christ. They put the word out. Now, you got to have your ear to the street in that realm of wickedness to even know they looking to kill Christ. You got to be trying to figure out how to come up on some money. You got to be in that type of world. It's called putting a hit out. Mm -hmm. You got to be a shooter in order to know that there's a hit out. You got to know you got to be a shooter. There you go, man. And that's the thing, man. And, and a lot of y'all brothers and sisters, like I said, y'all were in certain worlds before where you hear different information. And you don't hear that information anymore. Why? Because you're not in that world. You're not in that realm. You're not dealing with that type of stuff anymore, right? I used to, before the truth, I used to like to play poker all the time. So I would hear about different uh, Texas Hold'em games going on from place to place or whatever. Same thing going on here with Judas. How did he know to even go talk to these guys? Read that again. And the chief priests and scribes saw how they might kill him, mm -hmm. for they feared the people. Mm -hmm. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Mm -hmm. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. He was already thinking how that, uh, like we read at the beginning, the malignity is there. The evil was there. Now when he dabbled with it, now that he in that zone, he want to figure out how to come up on some money. The opportunity presents itself. Read on. Verse 5. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. Here it come. And he promised and sought opportunity. What did he do? And sought opportunity. He sought opportunity. Come on. To betray him unto them mm -hmm. in the absence of the multitude. What did they say to him? They said, look, we need you to get him alone so we can kill him. He had to seek opportunity for that thing. Let's jump over to John. Chapter 13. We'll start at 21. The book of John, chapter 13, in verse 21. Yeah. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Now, you got to understand, uh, Judas is already looking for opportunity for Christ to be isolated so he can take him out. Come on. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast says unto him, Lord, who is it? Mm. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. Mm. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Mm -hmm. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. So, he, so Lord already know that he's seeking opportunity for him to be isolated. He gave him the signal. Go ahead. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. Mm -hmm. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, mm -hmm. or that he should give something to the poor. Mm -hmm. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now was the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. And God is glorified in him. He was seeking opportunity for Christ to be alone. What's going to happen next? I know y'all read this story. Christ going to be alone in the Garden of uh, was it Gethsemane. He going to be alone with a few of the disciples. Opportunity is going to be right there for him to betray him. That's what Satan entering into you looks like. That was the whole point of that. That's what it looks like. You already covetous. You already whatever it is you are. You're seeking opportunity. You're dabbling in it. And then once you're all, all, already over there, now it's going to present itself. Now you're going to have the, the choice to go right or left because malignantly it's already there. Let's go back to that. Let me read that scripture again. Second Ezra 3. I hope that helped you. I hope that I hope y'all see what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to draw the line between the evil spirit that's in you and the 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 satanic devilish forces that exist. It's a difference. Come on. Second Ezra chapter three and verse twenty two. Yeah. Thus infirmity was made permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root. 
Mm. So that the good departed away and the evil abode still. The good that was there that he had built by the, t the time that he was around Christ, the good that he had built, it fled away because he he leaned into that malignity and to that root, that infirmity that was in him. He leaned into that side more than what he had gained during the time of Christ. And now Satan will enter into you. <sighs> Go ahead, JDL. My bad. I'm bubbling nah, over here. Nah, you good, bro. Can you read Luke? Uh, my bad. Luke 22 and verse 6 again. The book and of Luke. And can you pull up the definition, definition of opportunism? The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 6. I and he promised. Go ahead. And he promised and saw opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. So to me, that, that word opportunism, I know we read it, right? And we, we don't really get what, what that means. So let's just look at the definition. Opportunism is, go ahead, Yasadi, you can read it. The taking of opportunities as and when they arise, regardless of planning or principle. So being an opportunist means regardless of what your principles are, your ethics are, you're willing to sacrifice them for a desired outcome, right? Clearly, Satan had to be on him because at that point, he forgot about the Bible. He forgot about whatever his, his ethical responsibilities are. He forgot about what good or evil was. All he cared about was the desired outcome, right? So what Cab is saying is heavy because you got to think, are you rolling in an opportunistic spirit, right? Are you? Because that's a different level of evil. You don't care if it's going to hurt anybody around you. You don't care if it's for good or for bad. You're just worried about how does it benefit what you want to get done. So just something for you all to think about. Let's go to, um, I want to go to, I had it right here, Job 18 and 14. Job 18 and 14. The book of Job, chapter 18 and verse 14. Yes, sir. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, mm -hmm. and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. To the what? To the king of terrors. You got to understand, of all these evil spirits, these forces that exist, the king of terrors is the most high God. There's nothing worse than to falling into his hands. Read that again. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, mm -hmm. and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. Mm -hmm. It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his. The king of terrors. Was that the end of the description? Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. All right, let's go to this one. Go to Titus chapter 2, verse 12. Titus chapter 2. Start at 11. The book of Titus, chapter 2, in verse 11. Yeah. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So this is what grace does. Go ahead. Teaching us... That denying ungodliness. What does it do? Teaching us. So grace teaches us. Go ahead. That denying ungodliness mm. and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Grace teaches us to deny the malignant force, the malignant evil that's in us. That's what grace is supposed to teach you. How does grace teach you that? Because you know that the Most High God is the King of Terrors. You know that it's nothing worse than falling into his hands. That's how grace should teach you that. Read that one more time. Start at 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, mm -hmm. teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So tame your demon, right? Grace should apply pressure if you believe that the Most High God is the king of terrors. Because if you know that the law says you deserve death and that the Lord is the king of terrors, you're going to innately in your mind have the pressure to stay away from these ungodly things. Like I said, Christianity is witchcraft. Islam is witchcraft. And all the things that are, have been embedded in us through the world, through Christianity, through TV, through the music that you listen to, through how you spend your time, all of those things that's embedded in you, you should be able to say, does this align with what the scriptures say I should be thinking, what I should be doing? Surround yourself 
in the word of God to keep the demonic and evil forces that are innately in you and that exist in the world today. You, d you surround yourself in those things and it'll keep you safe from not only these evil spirits, but the king of terrors, which is the most high God. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.